Welcome to Cabmaster Software. This is lesson one on how to start using Cabmaster. Firstly, install it. You should have been sent a email with a installer link. Download that, follow the prompts. That's pretty straightforward. Once you've done that, you should, will have a shortcut on your desktop, which looks like this. So start the shortcut up. You will start up this screen. Just hit create new drawing. From here, this is the important bit. When you start, you need to choose, you can choose a template if you like, you can choose none, choose any template you like, but always use drawing properties. Don't use template properties and don't ask, just use drawing properties. Um, if you use the template properties, it will use the properties that are saved in a template, which is going to be different from your default, from your drawing properties, and you're not going to know what your settings actually are. So use always use drawing properties. Now, when you start up Cabmaster, it starts at this screen, which is your drawing properties. This is your settings for this job only, it's not your default settings. They will only change it for this job. So uh, when you start up, comes to here, you can click on client, choose a client, and you can load the settings, go to site. If it's, it's a different site, type it in. If not, tick the box and it copies it across from the client's details. Job number, you can type in a job number, whatever you like, or you can choose automatic and hit allocate, and it will just choose the next number in sequence. Uh, you can also choose who the designer is, what revision number you got going here as well, if you're using them. You can then use your defaults. Again, this is for this job only, not your default settings forever. forever. Um, so if you had something different in here, you want a different ceiling height or you want a different over, overhaul, overall cabinetry height, you can change them here. Um, the height of your base cabinets, um, how do you want to configure all these sorts of settings. Um, your kickboard or your toe kick height, I'm going to do something different here, just put it 133 just for this example. This will change all the cabinets moving forward you can come back here at any time and change them again. So if you want to change that back to 140 later on, you can do that. Again, this is a button here, drawing properties, which brings up this, these settings here. Also the depths of your cabinets. Materials, this is the default materials you've got set up for this job. Uh, again, quite happily come in here and change them to whatever you like. Um, there's a few things in here. Um, the floor doors or the base cabinet doors, I've got all as floor. If you untick that, there's my iPads and my tall ones. Um, if you want them the same, Tick the box if you want them different, untick it and change whatever you want them to be. Um, same as panels, um, same as your countertop, you can change them as well. And the last one is hardware. This is what your runners and your hinges and your handles you want to use for this job. The rest of these settings through here are generally set and forget. They're your default settings, there's your construction, they're your display settings. You can go through them, but for standard up and running, that's all you need to do. Get to here, hit OK. Again, drawing properties and come back at any time. Now we're going to go through the interface very quickly. This is called our ribbon toolbar across the top here. Um, file, a um, couple of things you've got in here. You've got some options settings in here you can go into if you like. That's how you can release your cloud license. Uh, obviously open, new, print, all those sorts of things. Fairly straightforward in there. This is a home ribbon. Um, this is our what we call our palette. Um, and we'll go through these in a few minutes. Insert, this is where we actually insert walls, ceilings, um, markers, lights, um, those sorts of things get used in this menu. Annotate, you can add in labels, text boxes, callouts, dimensions, you can use some CAD tools and do some drawings on there as well. Um, view, this is where the library catalog manager is, this is important, also the handles which will be d discussed in another video and you can also change what the view is, you also change these down the bottom down here as well. The views. Um, you've got elevations and cameras. So these things we discussed in a further video. So that's the basic layout of the ribbon. Um, the other thing to be aware of is your mouse. Very important to watch the mouse. Right now we have a little mouse pointer, which looks good. Cool, that means I can select something or I can do something. If I click on anything, I'll get this black cross, which means something's about to happen. So if I click down now I can place a cabinet because it tells me something's going to happen. It still has a black cross on it and if I keep clicking I'm going to keep getting the same thing. I go back to select, select them delete. So again watch what the the mouse cursor is doing because it does a lot of different things. Um, you can also right click on different areas. So left click you can select a box or place something. Right click brings up a menu and depends on what you're clicking on on what menu you're going to get. So it does different things. The other thing once you've got this, you can always hit escape and it always goes back to select as well. The wheel obviously zooms in and out, which is fairly straightforward, but the wheel is also a button. This is much underutilized. 
it always zooms to extent. So I've zoomed right in, do something silly, press the button, always comes back to this, what we call zoom extent. So it just fills the screen with what you're looking at with your page. So the wheel button is a really handy feature to have, so be aware of that. Okay, so we're going to start with putting a wall in. So we're going to go to insert and we can choose wall. Now, multiple ways to draw a wall. I've just clicked on the wall and now you can see I've got the black cross. That means something's going to happen. I can literally hold the left mouse button and freehand draw. It's a little bit hard to get things lined up perfectly every time. Or I hold down shift. I hold down shift and I'm holding down the left mouse button. It just always sticks on zero and 45 degrees. So it makes it really easy to, to draw walls. And I can go, yep, that much, by that much, and down this much. So holding down shift each time and then holding down the left button, click, click, click with the left button. Um, I can delete that. Now, the other way you can draw a wall is I select the wall. I can single click here and let go of the mouse button. Then I can use these, these options here. So I go, I want this length to be 2,985, for example. And then I go in that direction. Then I want it to be 3,000. And I just hit tab when I've typed it in, just to acknowledge it. Then I go in that direction. This one here, zero is east, or moving to the right. Zero starts that direction and it always goes counterclockwise. So 45 is going to be up, up and to the right. You can put in negatives, makes it easy. So I can go minus 45, hit tab, and you'll see it'll jump to 315, which is now down in this direction. So if I go, just changes to some different direction, go move at angle, it will then do that at that angle of the wall. So that's how you can do your walls um, more accurately. Once you've got your walls in place, um, even before you put your walls in place, you can edit them, but you can double click on your wall here and it comes up with the wall properties. So this is what our wall now looks like. And I've got three sections of the wall. So I'm going to wall one, two, three, and obviously goes, everything goes clockwise when you draw it. So I can choose which section of the wall I want. I can say I want this start at something silly, 2200, and you can see the wall now is now 2200 on that side over there. And the walls are currently invisible from the back, so it makes it easy to see. So height there, and I'll give something silly here. Whoops. Three meters there. And you can see that second section of the wall has now followed that one. So I go to wall two. That's now going to start at three meters and go back to what the original one was. So you control that. You control the height of your floor. Off you, if you want to take your floor off, off the ground, which you can do quite happily, you can raise it, raise it up at either or both ends. You can specify your wall, wall thickness. Um, you can also, if you don't want it to look like a brick wall or something like that, you can actually go browse for an image. So I'm going to just go there, browse image, and just choose Cab Master, for example, and that will then paint Cab Master all over the wall. And you also can fill or tile it. You can change what you want to do. So it's one, one or tiled. And you can specify the size and things like that. Or I can go to a solid color. So, and you can click on this and go, I want it to be that color there. And that's now the color of my wall. So you've got a lot of control over walls which is nice. Um, the other, possibly the really important section of walls is we always draw clockwise. And you can see where these markers are. They're on the inside. So if I was going to put a cabinet on here, the cabinet will stick to the inside of the wall. If I drew the wall the other direction, that's going to freehand one backwards. You can see the markers are now on the outside of the wall, so the cabinets will stick to the outside of the wall in that case. So we always draw the walls clockwise, which makes it easier. The other thing, if you want to edit a wall or move a, move a wall, I always go a quarter of the way along. So you can see there's a marker on the end, marker in the middle, marker on the end. Now, as I was saying before, watch the mouse. This cursor changes. See, it's now gone to a white cross with arrows. If I click on that, I'm grabbing that section of the wall and everything else is going to move around with it. So Control-Z does undo. Again, if I grab this section of the wall, I can move that area of the wall as well. But if I click a quarter of the way along, I can grab the entire wall and move it all in one piece. So this is, and it, again, anywhere quarter of the way along in any section, as long as I'm not grabbing a marker, you'll see the cursor or the mouse cursor shows the mouse pointer. It doesn't actually show something different. And I can always do that. And that's always the safest bit to grab it if you want to move the whole lot. So something to be aware of, always draw clockwise and always grab a quarter of the way along and you can move the whole lot. So that's how you can edit walls. The other thing, which is a lot more advanced, but I'm going to show you anyway, is if you right click on the wall, you have edit wall edge. This takes us directly to the editor for that wall edge. And we can grab here and say, I want to put in a rectangle here. I can just put in a rectangle there. If I double click on this rectangle, 
it pops up with the properties and go, okay, I want this to be, well, that's actually spot on for a wall right there. So you can change the size of whatever you want them to be. Um, I can also do something a little bit strange. I'll put a ellipse through there so we're back in play school. Return to page view. Uh, and that will now that will now show me that I've got this a doorway and a ellipse cut out in the middle of the wall. So you can actually prepare your wall completely. Okay, that's placing walls. Once you put your walls in place, you're happy with that. I can then go to my cabinets. Now, there's three ways to select cabinets. You can select a cabinet from the palette up here. And this is this is completely editable, and this is just my favorites. So this is not everything. This is just the, the most commonly used cabinets. Use them, choose them from here. This is a list of cabinetry. So I want a floor, for example. I want my standard. And this is all the floor standards I've, I have in my library. Um, or the third way, you can actually go and select a cabinet down here. And you'll see if I select something on the palette, it's automatically, automatically selecting up there as well. So this is a floor two door. This is a cabinet picker. This can be turned off and on if you want the real estate. Or you just don't like it. You don't need it. Use your favorites. Use that list. Um, but I can double click on here. And it comes up with the cabinet properties. And notice this is pale blue. I can then edit the cabinet from here. So this is going to be 800. And the cabinet changes sizes. I can then go and place the cabinet against the wall from here. So what I'm going to do firstly is grab a corner cabinet. And you don't have to edit the cabinet now, you can edit the cabinet later. So again, you can double click on the cabinet and you can go and edit the cabinet if you like. Or you can just click on the cabinet and then go place it. Now, black black cross again, so my mouse is going to do something. To be aware, if I hold down my left mouse button, I can now move the cabinet around. If I push against the wall, the cabinet now swaps around. If you push the cabinet straight into the corner, it's always going the wrong direction. Push into the middle of the wall, into place. So middle of the wall, into place, and again, middle of the wall, middle of the wall, it rotates to whichever direction the wall is facing. Then I slide it into place, cabinet's now in there. If I double click on this, it's now got a gray background, and I can still edit the cabinet in here, because it tells me this is a placed cabinet, and gray background, this is placed. The blue background is not placed yet. It means I'm choosing a new cabinet, and I'm about to, about to do something before I place it. So the cabinet is now down. Once you've placed the cabinet, so I can push this cabinet against the wall here, against the wall here. Once I've placed it, I can hit escape and it takes me back to select. But I can now grab this cabinet, it no longer rotates. So you can see it, it stays in its own position. What that's good for is if I was to place this cabinet here, hit escape, you've got plus and minus on your keyboard. So there's two different plus and minus keys. There's a plus and minus above the keypads themselves, so we've got like above the P key. And you can rotate, and these rotate plus and minus at 15 degrees. If I press Control and plus and minus, it rotates at 1 degree. But the plus and minus on your number pad, all the way to the right-hand side of the keyboard, if you've got it, laptops don't always have these, but the ones on the right-hand side of the normal keyboard, these rotate at 90 degrees. So it's very quick and easy to go hit it twice, and it rotates the cupboard 180 degrees. This is how you can build a, an island bar, for example. And if I grab another cabinet, push against that cabinet, it will rotate to, to snap to the same direction. Again, push against the wall, rotates, push against the cabinet, rotates. Place that. Once it's placed, they don't automatically rotate anymore, but you can press, again, plus and minus to rotate your cabinets. So something to be aware of, you can rotate your cabinets quite easy by doing that. Uh, again, you can edit your cabinets after you've placed it. So I'm going to drop this one to, say, 750. Um, and you'll see the cabinet behind has now dropped down to 750 wide. The kickboard height came in from the drawing properties that came through from before. You can change it here, but if I change it here, you're telling this cabinet wants to be different from the drawing properties from everything else. So you can quite happily do it. Uh, but if you go back to drawing properties and change that later on, this cabinet won't change because you said, I want this to be different. So that's a good and a bad thing. Depends on what you want to do with it. Um, so yes, if you only change that, any of these, so the height, the depth, the kickboard height, these things all come through from the drawing properties. If you don't want it to be different, don't change it. Um, number of doors, how many doors do you want? I can have as many doors, oh, I can have a few doors on here. Uh, I can independently hang them all on the left. So you can do some different things in here. Um, or I can turn them off and have an open cabinet. Um, options, how many shelves do I want? I want two shelves. I want, want them to be set back 50 mil. And you see they're now set back. So quick and easy to make these adjustments. And again, it's great. This is after we've placed the cabinet. So that was now there. You can see there's no more door swing on there as well. Um, and you can move, again, pick up a cupboard, move it around. Um, hit the plus, rotate it around, move it somewhere else. So it's quick and easy to do that. Once you've got your cabinet and you're happy with that, you can then right click on it 
and go add to catalog depending on the version of cabmaster you have so if you have designer pro or design or cabmaster premium this is available uh, in 3d and cl it's not um, but this is how you can actually save your cabinets in the library for next uh, for later use um, so if you've got something you've configured you've designed a, a, a cabinet save it for later on reuse it again and when you hit add to catalog it'll ask you for the name it'll ask you what do, what do you want to call it you can call it whatever you like and hit ok to save it and I have cancelled that deliberately so thank you very much for listening hopefully this helps you out with uh, using Cabmaster thank you